Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We believe at Deep Adventure Ministries that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. God is wild. God, Don't try to control God. Uh, God is, uh, Jesus said, the Lord said, I am the, you are the clay, I am the potter. So let's get on his plan and let's get on his, on his, what his uh, vision is for, for us and for you individually and watch God work. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, when I was uh, in social studies class, it's the only thing I remember about social studies class. It was after lunch. Super boring class. Super boring teacher. But And my mind drifted, but it really was almost like there was an epiphany moment in my life when suddenly as a junior in high school, I realized that I could be a father, that I could bring an eternal being into existence. And it changed everything for me. I worked three jobs to get through college. I said no to all of the the partiers around me, and I just got serious about because I got if I'm gonna have kids, I got to provide for them. And uh, I thought it's such an honor, you know, to be a father. And I thought, you know, I was taught about God the Father, the the you know the, the Holy Trinity. I thought, I guess yeah, I guess God's kind of like a father. I guess that's probably true. I mean, I probably, you know, paint him in that image because I kind of understand father because I have a father. But the reality is, is that God the Father is Father. And as a man, as a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a reflection, I'm an icon in the sense of him. When I uh, have children and when I, when I raise my children, I act in, the, in that role of a father. God is father. And Satan can't stand it. Satan hates that. And so there's this diabolical conspiracy uh, uh, in the spiritual uh, warfare of of Satan trying to cut the legs out from underneath fathers, fatherhood, and patriarchy. And we've got as our guest someone he should probably not mess around with, Jesse Romero. Before we started, I wish you could have heard his prayer. We had a beautiful prayer asking Mary's intercession, and then we asked everybody that, <laughs> every saint you can imagine for intercession. We're in good company with if they're praying for us. Jesse Romero, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thanks, Bear. Thanks for having me on. I'd love to be on your show. Yeah, we love. We just love Jesse. Of course, everybody does. I bet you have a few people that kind of hate you, you know, because you don't you oh, don't pull any punches. Me. Oh, trust me, I've got I got my fair share of uh, of detractors. Yeah. You know, when I used to train, I know you train. I know you were a boxer, and I used to train in martial arts. And there was this one guy I used to spar with on Friday nights. He always gave me a going away present. You know how you're boxing, you're in tight, and then all of a sudden you kind of break. He would give me that going away punch. <laughs> <laughs> I would fade away, and I kind of have a feeling you've probably you've probably dished a few of those out. I know very much that your that your um, your uh, ministry uh, part of that ministry is, is is a significant part of it is spiritual warfare, and so yeah. let's talk about this attack on patriarchy. Let's just get right into it. Okay, well, Barry, you see what's happening around the country. There's a lot of cities that have been on fire, and this has already been, and I'm not talking about the fire of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about the fire of anarchy, the fire of young thugs uh, from organizations like Black Lives Matter, Antifa, uh, in times past, Occupy Wall Street. We see what uh, anarchists are doing to the streets of uh, the United States when they disagree with something when they think that uh, something unjust was done by a police officer, they immediately take to the cities and they start destroying we anarchy. And in fact, many of these, organiz these anarchist organizations, when you read their websites and their own language on, on social media, you know what their big beef is? They want to get, get rid of the patriarchal family and they want to get a get rid of law enforcement, which is civic patriarchy. So if you know, and you were and you're and you're a former policeman. Yeah, you're, I'm a retired LA cop. 
Correct. I mean, you've lived that life. You know the reality of all that. So here's what's interesting. And, and, and this is not a coincidence that you have the, the Marxist young people in these organizations that are trying to destroy patriarchy. Why? Because patriarchy comes from God. There are three institutions of patriarchy that God has given us to protect us, okay, and to guide us. First of all, let's, let's take it from the lowest form. You got the family, okay? So in the family, the man is the head, Ephesians 5.22. The man is the St. Joseph of the house. The man is the, the head of the house, which is what Christ is to the church, so the man has patriarchal authority in his house. The house is called the domestic church. The, 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 the father, husband, is the priest of the house. And once again, he has jurisdictional or juridical patriarchal authority over the wife and the children. In other words, he's the St. Joseph of the house, which means what? He's called to lead the family in this life to heaven, he's called to protect the family physically and spiritually, their soul as well. And he's also called to uh, uh, provide for the family physically and spiritually. That's fatherly patriarchy. Let's move to the next rung of the ladder. Now you have spiritual patriarchy. The devil is also attacking that big time. And he's been attacking that. We've known since 2002, since the sexual scandals erupted in the Catholic Church, they went mainstream. We had the whole, you know, Dallas document on the sexual scandals in 2002, uh, uh, basically that overseen by <clears throat> Theodore McCarrick, one of the worst violators. But God has given us spiritual patriarchs, popes, bishops, priests, deacons, for the spiritual protection of the church, the spiritual protection of the people of God, to give us the sacramental graces, to pray over us, to bless us. So, and, and, and that's being attacked by Satan. We, Our Lady of Good Success has told us the devil will go, out, go after the clergy. Uh, we have uh, Our Lady of La Salette, same thing. Our Lady of Akita, Japan. The devil in the 20th century will go after the clergy. and Many of them will lose their faith. Now, now we have the third rung of the ladder. All these are institutions given to us by God. God has given us all these patriarchal institutions to protect us physically and spiritually. The last institution that God has given us patriarchally is civic patriarchy. That would be government. Government comes from God. You don't believe me? It's in Romans chapter 13. Read the whole chapter. Government comes from God. Now, I didn't say that every individual in government comes from God. I'm not saying Biden's election came from God. Not, not a chance. Or Nancy Pelosi. But the government institution comes from God. Our Lord even says in the Gospels, he says, render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Render to God what belongs to God. Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ recognized civic patriarchy. And for us, what does that mean? That means like the office of the president. That means judges, governors, mayors, on a more local level, law enforcement. That's civil patriarchy. That's civic patriarchy. The military. That's also a national patriarchy. These are institutions given to us by God to protect us. And notice, Bear, the, here's the point that I'm making. As a result of the three M's that are attacking the church in our Western civilization, the three M's, modernism, Marxism, and masonry, which all of them basically work in tandem. Modernism, Marxism, and masonry, what are they doing? Attacking the three institutions given to us by God to protect us. You know what you call when you kill a father? It's called patricide. And unfortunately, our society... Our society has been involved in patricide since the 1960s as a result of liberalism slash modernism, Marxism, and masonry. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jesse. We will invite you back some other time. No, that. <laughs> hey, Jesse, it's like you're, 
you, you speak at 100 miles an hour, gusting to 160 miles an hour. Hour. It's so funny, and then all of a sudden you stop. Have you ever have you ever fought someone like grappling, and you push on them and push on them, and then all of a sudden they pull you? That's what I just felt like. Like I was leaning against you, and you stopped talking. I just fell off the roof. <laughs> no, uh, it's true. There is this, and and it's di- when you say masonry, modernism, Marxism, it's diabolical. There's a spiritual warfare. There's an agenda behind all of that. Sometimes we get so focused on. The, the the political aspects and all that sort of thing that we don't see that up in the in the heavenly places there's a tremendous spiritual battle how do we how do we resp- you know and you're talking about saint joseph uh and and i and you know there's there is this definite attack against patriarchy i, I remember someone told me about 15 years ago we need to stop patriarchy and i go well, what do they mean by that and now it's 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 all over the front pages but jesus submits to his father his heavenly father jesus submitted to his earth, earthly father when when joseph and mary were married um mary of course the greatest human being ever to live other than you know our our savior um the visions uh, the angels stopped coming to mary they started to come to joseph because he was the head of the household and it says when 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 jesus was at the temple and they thought he was lost he said, "Didn't you know I'd be about my father's work?" And of course, he learned, he 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 learned about his heavenly father's work, and he learned from his earthly father how to work too. But then it says he went home and he submitted to his parents and grew in stature before both man and God. So even Jesus understood the significant role of the patriarchy of of his father, of his earthly father. What a yeah, yeah, yeah that that's right. And I think what we as Catholics, especially as men, look at. I can't change Washington. I, I've only got one vote. I can't change my governor. I can't change the senator. I only have one vote, like you have one vote. But what I can affect is the domestic church, the Romero household. Okay, and Jesse. Budget. Okay, Jesse. We got to take a break, and I wanted to get I wanted to get to the next subject. This is called a cliffhanger. In case you don't know what it is, folks, we're going to get right back with Jesse Romero. Talk about the domestic church. That's the key. That's the linchpin for the for the whole battle that's going on. Jesse, where can people find you? Everywhere, but be but specifically. <laughs> yeah, you can uh, you can look me up uh, uh, jesseromero.com if you want to invite me to the parish. jesseromero.com or buy my books, or if you want to listen to me. On social media, on on uh, on big on, on the tech platforms, go to vmpr.org, Virgin Most Powerful Radio.org, Virgin Most Powerful Radio.org. And Jesse, we're going surfing in a, in a little while. You're coming out to Hawaii. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue. Through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been? And how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. 
The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I just want to reach out to the mama bears out there. You know, there's nothing more furious, more uh, more dangerous than a mama bear. So we're not talking about the mama bears that are like uh, uh, the soft, cuddly ones. We're talking about those women that when, I, when Cindy and I go into mass, they're already there. They're by themselves. They're wearing a ring. They're praying the rosary. We're talking about the mama bears that, that you know, they, they, they want to bring their, the men in their lives, whether it's a son, a husband, a brother-in-law, a friend, they want those men to be, to grow, to come closer to the experience of God. And so we respect you and we love you. And we know you're the, your prayers are the power behind our ministry. So you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, become a mama bear and get one of our more roar in every poor mugs. But guess what, guys? Women, I should say. Someone gave us these teddy bears, Jesse. Wow. Uh, and it's Catholic biker teddy bears. So if you're a mama bear and you join, not only get the coffee <laughs> mug, you get you get one of these while we have them. But, uh, you know, Je- Jesse, we've been talking about uh, uh, the key. The key is, is the domestic church. You know, when Nehemiah came back... Uh, to Jerusalem, and he challenged the men there. Why? Why you let the? Why do you let the temple walls fall down? It was under your charge, and you let them fall down. The breach in the wall goes right through our living rooms. That's where the breach in the wall is. But the way he challenged the men was to rebuild the church. Was if you if you look at it, it's almost kind of boring reading. It says it gives the name of a real weird name, a Hebrew name, and it says, and this man and his family rebuilt the wall from here to here, and this man and his family rebuilt the wall from here to here, and it lifts off all these men and their families in that circular rotation, the domestic church that stood up, said, we're going to be counted as for me and my household, as Joshua said, we will serve the Lord, and they rebuilt the walls. Talk about, talk about the, the power of the domestic church. Yeah, absolutely, and by the way, that's a uh the church teaches us that that spouses, you know, the, the parents, by the by the very nature of the sacrament of baptism, which makes us priests, prophets, and kings, subordinate to Christ, it, 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 that means that we have a priestly authority and a priestly power, which is primarily exercised in the domestic church. That that's a term used in the catechism in paragraph sixteen fifty six. 26 and paragraph 2685 the catholic family is called the domestic church mom and dad have priestly authority in the domestic church now between mom and dad there's a reciprocity husbands and wives help sanctify one another and they care for one another and love one another uh, forgive one another, be patient. For, so within the context of marriage, we're helping us become holy, mom and dad. And again, and St. Paul specifically gives guidelines in Ephesians 5 that, again, the husbands must love their wives as Christ loves the church. That's a that big means, order, man. That's a tall order. Agape, which means sacrificial love, which means you're willing to lay down your life for your wife. That's a... You're willing, you, in other words, you live your life in imitation of Christ. So a husband is called to the vocation of sacrifice, the sacrifice of his life and his children. Why? So that his wife and kids might become holy, or as St. Paul says, and without blemish or stain. And so mom and dad together, we're the ones that are primarily responsible for the sanctification of our children. Okay. And, and, and natural law and divine positive law gives us the power to pray for our children, pray over our children, pray healing prayers for our children, pray deliverance prayer for our children, bless our children, lay hands on our children, uh, bless them with holy water, drive out evil spirits from a home. These are all powers given to mom and dad based on natural law and divine positive law. And so within the context of marriage also, we're making each other holy. The sacrament of marriage 
you confer grace upon each other, and we're making each other holy. Here's, here's the, the difficulty. When a man doesn't want to be the St. Joseph of the house, here's a picture I want to think about a bodyguard, you know, at, at, at some, you know, some club or something, okay? Bodyguard stands there, and he makes sure that no drunks or no bad guys are coming into this club tonight, right? Bodyguard. Um, and people know they said, no, 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 you're under the influence. Get out of here. I'm going to call the cops. No, 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 you're not, uh, uh, you know, you, you can't come in with that, you know, uh, eight-inch dagger in your waist. Get out of here. You... So a bodyguard is paid to protect bad people from going inside to the establishment. That's what a Catholic man is. The Catholic man is the bodyguard of the house. This is St. Joseph of the house. St. Joseph's job, one of his jobs was to protect. We know that because angels were sent to him, said, King Herod wants to kill your baby boy. Take your wife and the baby and run, flee to Egypt. So it was his call. The angel didn't go to Our Lady, went to Joseph. Why? Headship. And he says, we got to go because, and, and, and she wasn't like, you know, who are you to tell me what to do and stuff? You know what? Uh, you know, we're, we're like 50-50 here, you know? Isn't this a 50-50 deal? And like, you know, how, how dare you? You know, uh, I'm a liberated woman. No. She understood Ephesians 5, 21 to 31. Wives, surrender or submit yourselves to your husband. She understood that. She lived it perfectly. Look at her life in the New Testament. She always submitted and surrendered to the patriarchal authority of St. Joseph. That's the perfect uh, dynamic for, for, for a perfect Christian marriage. Okay? Now, here, a lot of women get hung up and that's why even a lot of priests don't like to preach this in the homilies and deacons. They like run away from it. Ephesians 5, 21, 31, where it says, Wives, submit yourself or surrender yourselves to your husband. They say, oh, no, I can't mention that. It's, it, it's, it's, not, it's not that difficult. The word submit or some translation surrender, wives, surrender yourselves to your husband. It's actually a beautiful term. The ter it's a Greek term. It's a military term, first of all. And the Greek term that was used by St. Paul is hupotasso, hupotasso, which means you rank under. In other words, it's a military term which indicates that the Catholic family is the church militant in micro. And the Catholic family being the church militant in micro, the man is the general, he's Patton, and the woman, hupotasso, the Greek word, means it's a, it means it's a military term. She ranks under him in the mission. There can only be one general. And then you have this, the, 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 the succeeding officers. So that word means to rank under the man, which means this. The word hupotasso also means that you're called to aid and help and assist in the mission. So what's the mission of the man? Ephesians 5, 21 to 31. What's the mission? To get the family to heaven. He's the general. His primary job on planet Earth is to get the man to heaven. The wife's job is a subordinate role. She's supposed to hupotasso. Surrender to the general's patriarchal authority and help him, assist him in getting himself, herself, and the kids to heaven. It's actually a beautiful term. It takes power. Say, it takes it's a, a powerful person to do that. Term. It takes it's a powerful it takes a powerful person, Jesse, to do that. You, you know, I was thinking about the, the, the centurion. The one that Jesus said had more faith than anyone. He said to Jesus, "Come heal my ser will you heal my servant?" And Jesus said, "Okay, I'll come with you." And then he said, "No, it's not necessary." And these were his words, speaking of this military terminology, "For I am a man under authority, and I have servants under me or men under me." He was a centurion, he was in charge of 100 men. And I say to one go and he goes, another one do this and he does it. So it's it's not necessary that you come to my house, just speak the word. 
and my servant will be healed. We hear that every time we go to Mass. There's a certain powerful understanding that he had. If he wants the people, his centurions, to obey him, he needs also to be under authority. And so the role of the woman is, and Jesus said about this man, I haven't seen such great faith in all of Israel because he understood the concept of patriarchy. He was a man under authority. His wife understood that, too, or his men understood that, too, and they submitted to it. So for women, you know, my wife, Cindy, let me give you an example of a woman that has a, has a, a way, a really a powerful influence on a man. When we, when we go to ha- uh, have, have coffee in the morning, we do our liturgy of the hour, and the, she, she gets the coffee, and I, and I kind of get ready. If, we, if, if, we, if, we have a, if we're going to eat dinner or we're going to have breakfast or wherever we are, at the house or out to eat, and, and I start eating, she waits. She won't eat at all. And then finally I go, oh, Cindy, why aren't you eating? We didn't pray. So she, she, she has this influence, but she does it in a way that opens the door for me to be the St. Joseph. Because honestly, what I want you to talk about next when we come back is men have abdicated their role, and that leaves women defenseless, and they don't know what to do. So we'll be right back. We're going to talk with Jesse Romero. He's going to talk to the to uh, to the men out there and to the mama bears out there. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to challenge the men out there to go to deepadventure.com and join Bear's Man Cave. We're a group of men. It's a secret Facebook group. We post um, our challenges. We, we post inspirations. We post ask for prayers. Uh, twice, a, twice a month we all get together, the Zoom video chat, and we challenge and encourage uh, each other. We always think of ourselves as the men in the cave of Adullam where David gathered his band of misfits and uh, all these men who were just kind of didn't fit in anywhere, didn't know where to be. They were outlaws or they were running from debt they owed or something. And God formed them in that cave, and they formed each other to become the mighty men of valor. So we invite you to go to deepadventure.com and join uh, Bear's Man Cave. So, Jesse, I don't want to skip ahead on what you were saying, but the question is, where the rubber meets the road is, you've got a man, uh, he has his role as priest of the household, what and yet he's so many men have just abdicated. When I when I go to Jesse, I was speaking to a group of young adults the other day on Zoom, and there were like maybe fifty of them, and there were maybe three, four, five percent of the women or ten percent of the women had their videos on, and a, just a couple of the men. And I, I said said to the men, if you're on video, you know we're on Zoom, turn on your Everyone turn on your cameras so we can have a dialogue with each other. And the women were respectful, and they began to turn on the, cam- the cameras, and the men didn't. And I finally said, if you guys are so passive that you can't turn on your cameras, then just leave the, the chat. I don't want to talk with you. And uh, more and more and more and more of the men turned their mom. And the, and the women there, though, were saying, and I, so I said, okay, now we got your attention. Women, what do you want to say to the passive men around you? And they said, these are single women. They, they don't date us. They hang around us. If they do date us, they don't ask us to marry. And we don't see, we don't see men of virtue who are willing to... They want, we want the traditional man. We want a man who knows what he wants, takes charge, and will protect us and provide us and has a vision for our future. And we've had conversations among each other. Should we just settle? Because it's kind of like that song, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Can you talk about that dynamic where the men are, are like neutered and the women... 
what, what do they? What's their response to it? That's a tough question. That's the question. Yeah, the, 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 this is it. See, the devil understands. He knows the laws of God because the, the the devil is a lawyer from hell. He knows natural law. He knows divine positive law, and he knows that the man has spiritual patriarchal authority, priestly authority. A man's a man's faith and prayers are very powerful. In fact, as it says uh, in the book of Exodus chapter twenty, and I think Exodus chapter thirty two that uh, the blessing of a father extends to the thousandth generation. Get that. The and so th that, that, that's how powerful the faith and prayers of patriarchy are. They flow down to the thousandth generation. That's what the Bible, the devil knows that. And so that, how does grace flow into the family? So to answer your question, God, the Trinity pours his grace down upon the mediatrix of all graces, the Blessed Virgin Mary, who dispenses the graces to the human race. How? Through patriarchy. Through the priest or through the husband at home. The grace of the Trinity through the Lady, Our Lady of Mediatrix of all graces flows down into the family through patriarchy. That's what it says in Exodus chapter 20 and, and Exodus chapter uh, 32. It's right in the Bible flows down from the man to the thousandth generation. And so the devil knows that. So he wants to stop the flow of grace. It's like when you're using the water hose outside and the water hose has a kink. The devil wants to kink the faith of the man so that water doesn't flow because the water flows called grace from the man through the family, from God through the man through the family. So he wants to kink the man's faith. How does he do it? Several weapons. Lukewarmness. Lukewarmness. Uh, okay? it's, it's, I wish you were hot or cold, but I'll vomit you out of your mouth. if you. There's nothing more disgusting than a lukewarm Christian. And the, and the way he makes us lukewarm, Barrett, is he makes us lukewarm, but he makes us in love with the things of the world. That's why St. James, mm. in uh, James chapter 3, says uh, to, to, uh, it, to be in love with the world is to be at enmity with God. So what the devil wants to do to the man, because he knows that grace flows to the man, to the rest of the family, if he can make the man so worldly that the man just loves creature comforts, uh, the man just basically has given over with St. John the Apostle in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, says, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. By making a man love the world and the things of the world more than God, he's kinked the hose now. Now the grace of God is not flowing into the family. Guess what? Now the bouncer has gone. There's no bouncer at the front door. The door's wide open at night for, uh, you know, for any burglar or thief that wants to come in. And this is how demons, how they operate. They kink the hose, the faith of the man, by worldliness, the man falls into this temptation because, again, the theology of temptation is this. St. Archbishop Fulton Sheen says the demons will tempt, and then it becomes a delight to our eyes, a delight to our senses, number two, and then we fall into consent. Boom. You're stuck in sin. That's Adam and Eve. That's the whole, that's the story yeah, of Adam and yeah, Eve. Here's the theology of temptation, Archbishop right. Fulton Sheen. T temptation projected at your five senses. Do you take delight in the temptation or do you avert your gaze and take custody of your intellect, custody of your eyes? Oh, if you delight in the temptation, then you move to the third phase. Now you consent to the temptation, and then it, this is the way the demon. This is the way the demon then takes it, it out all day long. Okay, that's the next step because you consent to it. Once you've given Satan legal permission, um, then it becomes demonic, and you're you're oppressed, maybe possessed. You've, you've given yourself over to that whatever that is, whether it's uh, greed, wanting power, uh, sex, big thing, pornography, um, whatever it is. When you give yourself over to that, guess what? Satan has permission now to dominate your life, and right. and the hearts of many will grow cold. Absolutely, and uh, and and this is exactly why, uh, when 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 a man is taken out, uh, the family's unprotected, the wife is unprotected, the kids are unprotected, 
and now they're open to what's called diabolical retaliation. And this is, the devil doesn't change his strategy because that same strategy has been working since the Garden of Eden. What happened in the Garden of Eden? Adam, God's firstborn. Eve, God's firstborn daughter. Adam has patriarchal authority. He's called to basically, uh, he's called to, to the, the Garden of Eden is his household. That's his sanctuary. Everything is under his dominion. Eve is made for him to be his helpmate. Notice the, the word is helpmate. Not, 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 you know, not slave like Islam. When they look at women as slaves, but also not, not as a, you know, speaker of the house either or vice president. Okay, you know, like lording over men. No, the Hebrew word that's used, Eve is called to be Adam's helpmate, which in Hebrew... Ezer Kenegdo, that's another military term. So two military terms are used for women. That word means, once again, to help the man in the mission. To help the man in the mission. What's the mission of Adam? Well, again, he's the father of the human race. He's, he's the priest of the home, and he's called to guard the garden and till the garden and protect his wife. A talking snake comes over here, and Eve goes and confronts the talking snake. Adam should have said, honey, where are you going? Oh, somebody's knocking at the door. It's the talking snake. I'm going to go talk to him. No, you're not. No, you're not. I'm, I've got authority here. Right. I don't know what this talking snake is. This could be dangerous. Step back, honey. Let me confront this dangerous situation. Let me confront this intruder. Because I got priestly authority over this house. Right, people want to blame me... Eve. Yeah. Adam, Adam <laughs> wasn't there. Where was Adam? Why didn't he Adam, defend her? Adam was guilty. Exorcists use the term. Adam was guilty of the of the sin of dereliction, dereliction of duty, because mm. it's his duty, his obligation, to protect Eve. He was derelict <laughs> in his duty. Now, what's the sin of Eve? Eve is being the alpha woman. She's being the radical feminist, pounding her chest, saying, I am woman, watch me roar. You know, honey, step back. Get behind my dress. Let me go talk to this talking snake, and I'll go dispatch him real quick. Okay? What exorcists use the term, what was Eve guilty of? She was guilty of the sin of usurpation. Yep. Usurpation, which means she's stepping out of her lane of authority. Okay. She's outside her lane. Let's talk about that when we come back from this break. Jesse, we're going to have to have – I know you're a busy person. We're going to have to have you back because uh, we got only one more segment left with you. Okay. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Jesse, where can people find you? Because I know you're out uh, doing parish missions and things. I thought soon you'll be here in Hawaii. Yeah, uh, I'll be in Hawaii, I think, in two You're months. You're back on the road. I'm back on the road. Yeah, I'm getting, uh, uh, I've been busy the last, uh, i say the last six months. Well, I've where can they find you? JesseRomero.com, JesseRomero.com, or you can go on, uh, you can go on social media and, and you can hear me doing uh, two hours a day live uh, podcasting. It's called Virgin Most Powerful Radio, Virgin Most Powerful Radio. We are, we're on all the platforms except YouTube. YouTube just gave us a lifetime ban as of yesterday. Yeah, we so want to talk. Oh, right okay. Well, we're going to... Okay. Lifetime ban. Yeah. All right. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting 
the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak Adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station well you asked for it here is more of the bear wozniak adventure aloha welcome to the bear wozniak adventure our guest today is jesse romero you know um if you want to be blessed by the lord uh get under the spot where the blessings come out and that means this, if you're under authority, which all of us to some degree or, or, not, or in some way or other are, if you, if you remain under that authority, that's where the blessings flow. Stay, stay under the spot where the blessings go out. The man, in, in, we're talking about the domestic church here with Jesse Romero, think of him like an umbrella. If you're getting rained on as opposed to being blessed you know, by a river of grace, if you're getting rained on and there's thunder and lightning in your life, check yourself out and say, hey, am I under authority? Now, if you are under authority and you're trying to be responsive to authority in your life, and that authority is is dere in dereliction of duty, as Jesse would say, as as our, our exorcists say, then your role is the role of influence. Your role is to go to battle in prayer, and to and and to and to and to ask God to 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 intervene. But remain under the umbrella of protection. Don't don't uh, stay under the blessing blessings. Where the, the blessings flow through the patriarchy, and don't get, don't step outside where the lightning and the rain on. If you're getting rained on, there's there's two reasons: either you stepped out, or the person above you is derelict, and there's a, there's holes in the umbrella. But it's say it's safer to stay there and then to pray for to pray for intercession. We're talking with Jesse Jesse Romero ab about the, this this whole area, the fact that the diabolical arena that that takes place when the man is derelict and the woman usurps. Yeah, uh, and, and in fact, you could even see that the New Testament develops this because in the New Testament, when they talk about the Adam and Eve story, you know who gets blamed for, for Eve eating the apple in, in, uh, in disobedience to God and by listening to the talking snake? In the New Testament, in Romans 5.14 and in 1 Corinthians 15.22, St. Paul says, it was Adam's fault. Adam's to blame. Wait a minute. Adam didn't talk to the snake. It was Eve. And Eve is the one that ate from the forbidden fruit. Who gets blamed in the New Testament? Adam. Why? Because theologically, he's the one that has the priestly patriarchal authority. And he's the one that should have intervened. And he didn't. And this is why, again, even St. Peter developing this whole theme of patriarchy in 1 Peter 3, 7, he says, Likewise, you husbands, live considerately with your wives, bestowing honor on the women as the weaker sex. Since you are joint heirs of the grace of life, in order that your prayers may not be hindered. So notice, a man's prayers are powerful, but they can be hindered. If you, if you treat your wife like a second-class citizen, your prayers will not be heard by God. A man is called to exercise the virtues of, sub-virtues of courage. We see that in little David facing Goliath, okay? The sub-virtue of courage, that, that's that quality of spirit that enables you to face danger. A man is also called to have the sub-virtue of, it's called chivalry, 
We see that in little David against Goliath. Chivalry means, it means uh, bravery. It means uh, skill. It, it, it means uh, uh, generosity and victory. And it also means piety and courtesy towards women. So a man's role is to lead his wife. And that's a God-ordained role. It's, and, and it's a role that has patriarchal authority. It's not a master-slave relationship. If you want to see the Catholic understanding, it's the St. Joseph Blessed Virgin Mary relationship. That's our model. The St. Joseph Blessed Virgin Mary relationship. It's a, it's, it's a man's job primarily, once again, uh, in fact, St. Timothy talks about, Paul talks about that to Timothy in 1 Timothy 5.8. He says, and whoever does not provide for relatives and especially family members has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. This is why, bear on Judgment Day, on Judgment Day, men are going to have much more to answer to God than women and, 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 and people if they die as children or teenagers. Because the husband, at the particular judgment, will stand before the throne of Christ. He's going to have to render an account for himself, his wife, and his kids. The wife will only have to render an account for herself, not her husband. The kids will render an account for themselves. The husband will render an account on judgment day for everybody. Because he was the one that was tasked with the job of getting everybody to heaven. And again... And when you look at salvation history, God always saves through patriarchy. This is the whole, the whole uh, story of salvation history. A couple of examples. When God went to set out to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, the, the two wicked cities that were involved in, 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 uh, in the, the act of sodomy, that's why it's called Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, it, who was pleading to God to spare them? It was Abraham. Abraham was a righteous patriarch. He was pleading to God, and, and God took his pleas into account. Now, move on. Another page. But, 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 look at, but, but look at Lot, dude. So what was Lot doing living in that, in that, in that city? He should, have, he should have been long gone seeing what was going on in that city. And, he did, and Lot did eventually Eventually leave. he did, but his wife, yeah. by that time his wife had, she looked he back. He told his wife, we got to look, we got to go, honey, and don't look back. He had patriarchal authority. His wife didn't listen to him. She looked back. He says, we've got to flee. Don't look. God says we can't look back. Lot's wife looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. Why? She disobeyed patriarchal but, authority but, Lot. But let's talk about Lot, though. Lot had sown the seeds of distrust in that in the, in his family and in his, in his wife if he was living in that city for that long and hadn't left we w without you know angels coming to intervene he had dropped the ball too so i mean we could point at her she did look oh. back but i you know when you when you've sown the seeds of distrust and and, and you're not a trust you know it, it's it comes back to the man he needs to he needs to fulfill his mission, fulfill his role, fulfill his purpose, because he's been given. It's not like God's given you something that you can't do. He's given you the grace, the power, and the natural ability to Correct. do that, and the instinct to be heroic. Yeah. Lot, Lot is not an example that I would use as somebody uh, of, of faithful <laughs> patriarchy, so that's that's yeah. not my example. I'm not even using him. No, I, I know. I know. I'm just, yeah. I was just yeah. taking that, no, that thread I mean, one further. I'm, I'm using Abraham as a faithful example Amen. Of, of faithful patriarchy. Another example of faithful patriarchy, Noah. The Bible says that at the time of Noah, the, the world was wicked. Noah built an ark. He said, take your family members and, and a pair of every animals into the ark. The Bible says that Noah was righteous. The Bible says Abraham was righteous. It uses that word exactly. Well, when the, when the flood came, who was saved? Noah and his eight family members alone. Everybody else died. Why? God saves people through faithful patriarchy. Amen. That's the story of the Bible. I'll give you one more. Amen, Jesse. A Roman soldier uh, in the book of Acts, he's uh, Paul and Silas start, pra start praising God. The, 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 the doors of all the cells burst open. The jailer is saying, oh no, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the governor is going to kill me. All the prisoners have been released. They've broken out of jail. 
So the gov it doesn't say that he has a sword in his stomach, but the tradition tells us he's going to kill himself. He's going to do a hairy carry. He St. Paul confronts him. The Roman soldier with the soldier ready to pierce himself says, uh, Sir, what must I do to be saved? And St. Paul says, look what St. Paul says to the Roman soldier. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your family shall be saved. Notice, the Bible clearly shows us Abraham, Noah, Amen. the Roman soldier. Amen. God saves the family through the faithful patriarch because why? It's the faithful patriarch, his faith and prayers merit the grace of salvation for the entire family. Pulls down, brings down the, the grace of salvation to the whole family so that they're saved. That's called that's called meriting the grace of salvation for your family. That's the role of a Catholic man. That's how the that's how the offspring are saved. Well, Jesse, we got we got to go. But I want one of the things that we've focused on here is we keep saying, well, what does the woman do in that situation? Uh, you know, but but your your solution was to keep coming back and hammering the men. <laughs> and that's the solution. We can talk about the women. Maybe next no. month we'll do a whole thing just on the women, a whole hour on the yeah. women. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. But I mean, it's got to start with men. Uh, step up, and, and and let me tell you where where you start, men. If you've been uh, derelict in your duty, go to confession. Get let the Lord get, give you a good scrub. You probably need it, and then uh, write down. Your mission statement. What is my mission? What is my purpose? Write down each member of your family. What is God doing in their lives, and how can you help that happen? But, Jesse, we got to run. We're out of time. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure, jesseromero.com uh, if you want to find Jesse, and uh, deepadventure.com if you want to find us. Until next week, you know, Jesse, uh, we sign off by saying, May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. But I think with you, we'll sign off with Viva Cristo Rey. Can we do that together? Viva, Viva Cristo, Cristo Rey. Rey. Amen. Viva. I love that. I love that. The cry of the Cristeros. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wildstick Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wildstick Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Ooh.